Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kathy Gruber. And I'm Jason Mefford. And today we have Sarah Routman with us, and we're so excited. If you guys are watching, you see a bunch of stuff about laugh in the background. So, Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself, because I'm guessing we're going to be doing some laughing today. Well, in fact, I want to start by asking your listeners, have you laughed today? Because really, that is, to me, the most important question that a person can ask, Mm -hmm. because if the answer is no then you need to tune into one of my things because I need to get you laughing. And why? Why would I want to get you laughing? Well, that's, that's my story. My story is that I teach people how to access purposeful, playful laughter with no jokes because it's a really serious thing, laughter. There are so many health benefits that you can get. You can get your heart moving faster and actually clean the plaque that's building up in your arteries, so much so that doctors, heart doctors, are literally writing prescriptions for their patients that say, laugh for 15 minutes a day. Good belly laughs, which is great for me. (laughs) But um, And you can actually increase the oxygen, oxygen flow in your body even better. Laughter addresses sad. You become less stressed, anxious, and depressed. You can decrease pain. Fear, we laugh when we're anxious, when we are feeling awkward. Mm -hmm. And so the good news is you don't need a sense of humor. Life doesn't need to be treating you well. You can be filled with stress, overwhelm, a little bit of COVID-itis, you know, like really pent up cabin fever. If you can learn, and hopefully in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna teach you how to put in some playful laughter, you're gonna change your life. And that's my goal is to change your life with laughter because my la- my life was changed with laughter 28 years ago and I've been laughing ever since. That's so, so. great. Well, I, I think it's funny because when, you, when you're saying that, I, I kind of flash back to this experience I had when I was in fourth grade. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's like um, one of the teachers, she was my teacher, but we would do like this singing time, right? And so she would, she had a guitar, she would play the guitar. <laughs> all of the kids in the third and fourth grade would get together and play, right? And she, she sang us this song about goober peas, which is a, <laughs> a, a, a peanuts, right? Oh, yeah. But she explained the song that it came from the Civil War time period when people were starving and all they had to eat was peanuts. And I remember her saying, and it was a lesson I learned there, you know, we can either cry about it mm-hmm. or we can laugh about it. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, again, I think at, at those times, probably I'm guessing, like you said, you know, 28 years ago when this really helped you, there's a lot of times maybe when we feel like crying and sometimes crying is, is the right emotion to be feeling and doing. But if we can laugh instead of crying, like you said, there's all these different health benefits to it. So, well, in yeah. fact, my favorite quote is by Irving Berlin and it is life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. Absolutely. Yeah. And it is so true because the laughter that I encourage people to put into a given situation can't change your situation, right. but indirectly it may because it does literally change your mindset and change your brain chemistry. Physiologically, you change when you laugh and that puts things in your body that help to clarify things, to help give you a clean slate. And actually what happens, just if you'll both smile for me for a second and keep smiling while I talk, just a big smile, that's great. So (laughs) while you're doing that, endorphins are rushing to your brain and they're sending cortisol, which is the stress hormone, away. And they're inviting serotonin and dopamine, which are the feel-good chemicals, into your body and saying, set up camp here. And now when you laugh, you release more of those same feel-good chemicals. So you're changing your body chemistry. You're changing your brain right away. So you can't physiologically be angry and laugh at the same time. So imagine what would happen if a person was in an argument with a partner, a spouse, a roommate, and and instead of letting the anger escalate, they went over to them and said, can we hold hands for a second? Please look at me, let's just laugh for a second. (laughs) I'm not laughing at you, but can we just laugh for a second? Mm -hmm. You would change the brain chemistry between you 
And the research also says that when you make eye contact with someone and share laughter, you can't, you actually begin to share more honest things about yourself, whether you're laughing with a stranger or a friend. That's so great. imagine how that can de-escalate for an anger management class or uh, a team that has a lot of stress and a lot of angst happening. Kids on the playground, this is a great anti-bullying tool. Uh -huh. And so it just is so powerful. And that's why I do it is that when I learned the power of laughter, I couldn't stop doing it. I wanted yeah. to share with everyone. So a couple things came to mind. My favorite client ever, Dorothy, she died when she was 96. Oh, she oh would, um, she was, I mean, she was a hoot. Anyway, stories I got about her. Um, <laughs> but every day she would throw her head back and make herself laugh. Oh yeah. And she did that for me a couple of times. It was, it was so fun and so awesome. And I also, I think about, was it Norman Cousins? Absolutely. Who, who wrote the book, he, who yes. was diagnosed with being so sick and they had him in the hospital and he said, no, I'm going home. And he watched what, Three Stooges videos every day. Yep. And Marx Brothers. Yep. Yeah. Marx Brothers. That was it. And he laughed himself well. Yeah, and it's exactly. like, there's such power in that. So let me, let me ask you this. So yeah. there, there's not, from what you're saying, there's not necessarily a connection between happy and laughter. Absolutely. You can make yourself laugh whenever you want. Because I think people... It, Think, well, I'm not in a good mood today. I can't just laugh at something. Right. Sure you can. Laugh at whatever you want. In fact, when you're not in a good mood is the exact time to laugh. Yep. When you're feeling in a funk. In fact, I'm, I'm doing this all out of order, but I'm going to just share this with you anyway. So you're in a funk. You're in a bad mood. You know that you want to change it, but you don't know how. So I'm mm -hmm. going to suggest that you just tap your shoulder. You can do this with me. Just pretend like someone's tapping on your shoulder and you're like, who is it? Oh, it's this guy. It's my giggle friend. And he's going to tap and annoy me until I engage and giggle with him. So go ahead. Let's, <laughs> I know you're not going to stop until I giggle. <laughs> and when I do, then he's going to jump up and down because my guy is a little giggle emoji and he's got finely legs and a little. So now I'm just <laughs> laughing at Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but then the other guy he wants attention too it's like what okay <laughs> no no him too him too i'm just thinking how i'm going to edit this and if i can actually get a little cartoon like i'm picturing the little annoyed from dominoes the little annoyed yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true because what happens is nothing was funny life wasn't good you know the moment was not so fabulous but i did so many things in this moment i first shifted my attention Yes, Before I even started to engage, I've already shifted my attention. Uh -huh. And now once I do engage, I'm flooding myself with these great hormones, but I'm also being present to this moment uh -huh. instead of whatever all that is. And now because I've shifted my brain chemistry, now when I come back to this, the, the, the hope, the premise is it doesn't look quite so bleak. I, I've cleared my brain. I've taken the stress out of the brain. It's like you just literally uh -huh. sent in a bunch of little movers and they said, okay, stress, out, out you go. And now when I look at it, it doesn't look so bad. And so I have a fresh look, a fresh approach. And now that's when creativity can come in. Uh -huh. And so it really isn't about happy. It's about joy. Joy is in the moment. Happy is subjective. It's about, is my life good? Do I have a good relationship? Am I right. happy with my money situation? And the answer to a lot of those things right now for a lot of people is no, 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 no. Right. And so, well, but you can find joy no matter what. And if right. you can't find it, you can put it in. Right. Well, it's so funny because I, I, I'm a coach and I have so many people say, I just want to be happy. It's like, mm -hmm. but what does that mean? And right. they can't tell me what that means. Right. And I, happiness is something we create with every moment. It's That's not right. something that happens to us. And I see so many people seeking happiness outside of themselves. They're waiting for that, that, that identification with that title, with that girl, with that car, with the cat, with the, you know, and they're not finding these things inside ourselves. And what I love about what you're saying is this is something that we are tapping literally into um, whenever we need it, whenever we want it. Jason, That's I right. just love the grin that you have on your face right now. <laughs> well, it's like all these punny things that you're saying too, right? And it's, it, and it's, it, well, and it's kind of tying in too, because, you know, we're talking, you're talking about happiness, right? And we all want to be happy, Absolutely. but scientifically, how do we usually happiness is defined as subjective well-being. That's what we That's call so, it. Uh -huh. Subjective well-being because it's based on the person's own subjectivity of their current circumstance, right? right? On, yep. a, on a sliding scale. So that's, that's how they measure happiness is usually through subjective well-being. But, you know, again, it's not um, 
that it because it is subjective and and I love what you said that joy is different from happiness because mm-hmm. again I've been I've been kind of this is actually one of the things I've been thinking about recently because uh, in in one of the books that I wrote one of the affirmations is I am joy and thinking okay what's the difference really between joy and happiness right and how can you be joyful uh, and and joking and laughing you know, even though you may not feel happy. Right. But I love too what you said about moving the attention because just doing a simple exercise like, hey, my my giggling guy is on my shoulder. I'm I'm gonna do, right? You know. <laughs> no, here we go. Right. <laughs> Ooh, right. All right, well, the, J- the Jason yeah. Weird joke. But you move your attention. <laughs> Some sometimes right. your attention doesn't need to go back either. That's because right. Because that's, that's one right. of the biggest things about getting out of the emotion is move your attention to something else. Exactly. Like well, it and laughter, it's a higher emotion in your movement. Well, and one of the best things about laughter yoga, which is how I started, mm-hmm. well, my, that was the second step. I'll go back and tell you the story of how I got to this in a moment. But uh, I usually start a session with something called smile ups. It's like push ups for your mouth. <laughs> so just smile <laughs> and then relax and smile and relax. And you can be as goofy as you want. It doesn't matter. So when we do laughter yoga, there are two rules. We always try to make eye contact. And if you're alone, then you can, um, you, you can use a mirror, but you can also make yourself little smile buddies. <laughs> you can have someone to smile with you, or you can cheat and get one of these guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then they need to smile, laugh at each other. It's also all about play. But I start with smile ups because a lot of times people feel a little awkward about laughing on purpose. Mm -hmm. And the thing about laughing on purpose that's important is the second rule of laughter yoga is that we suspend judgment. However you show up and laugh is okay. It doesn't matter. Like if I just laugh like this, (laughs) that's okay. Or I can do a really... You're not ever laughing at someone. We agree that we're laughing together to support each other in laughter because we want the laughter. We want the benefits. And the, the crux of the matter is that you don't have to wait for something to be funny. So we think that laughter uh-huh. is about humor, but actually scientific studies indicate that there is only 20% of laughter is a result of something being funny. And that's good because humor is subjective, just like happiness. So that means that we laugh when we're nervous, when we're awkward, when we feel scared, when we feel nervous. We laugh in a social situation and we laugh because it's contagious, like when I laughed a minute ago and you both started laughing. And so when I start a laughter session, it's purposeful, playful laughter. I'll tell some boundaries and some rules, the eye contact Mm -hmm. and the suspending judgment. I'll often start with smile ups because it gets you laughing, especially if you're looking at someone else. And then um, I'll ask everyone to introduce themselves and say a name and give a laugh. So let's try that right now. So my name is Sarah. (laughs) No pressure. Laugh how you want. Go ahead, <laughs> Kathy. What's your laugh? Or introduce yourself. Oh, I'll do a laugh that drives my boyfriend crazy. My name's Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, Jason. All right, I'm going to try to do this one. This is one that my friend used to do a lot. Hi, my name is Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the snorting. <laughs> I you know, like, have, a, like a big snort in the, in the little middle snort, of it. Big snort, little snort. I, I, we, I, I used to have friends that came over for game night, and you yeah. knew that I was completely, because when I get tired, I get silly, and I get very goofy, and yeah. then I would start with the laughing, and then I would wee, so I'd need my inhaler, but then it would go to snorting, and then it would go to the squeak, where <laughs> it would just, there would be sight, and you just hear this, <laughs> and my head, I have to put my head down, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> and ben, and ben and Tracy were like, oh, Kathy's gone. She's like, that's gone. Actually, that, that's actually the kind of laughter that we're after. We want to laugh as hard as possible. We want to laugh till our belly hurts, till tears are coming down. That's the kind of laughter that is the healthiest. And in order to get the most amount of benefits, you want to try to laugh for 15 minutes at a time. You can wow. breathe in between, but you want to do 15 <laughs> minutes of deep belly laughs a day. That's what wow. gets your heart going and your oxygen flowing. You but know, and I the, bet I get to that because yeah. I'm Oh, for sure. I mean, and, it's... and here's the thing. Your body doesn't know the difference between laughing because something's funny yeah. or just laughing. And chances are there might have been something that 
tickled you or triggered that laughter in the beginning. But after that, it didn't trigger everyone else, but your laughter triggered everyone else. Yeah. So, you know, when you know, when you understand that your body doesn't need to think it's funny, that you're not looking for happiness, you're trying to put in joy, and that you can have this incredible element of play. You said you get funny and silly and goofy. That's really the key. If you can put play in, that is taking all your self-judgment away. We're not thinking, oh, I'm an adult, I'm stressed, I have responsibilities, I shouldn't laugh. You're thinking the way a child thinks, which is I'm curious. And it's like, how fascinating is this? And they're rolling on the floor and you say, what's so funny? And they don't know because it really isn't about funny. It's mm -hmm. just about joy. Yeah. And so when a, when a client says, I want to be happy, maybe I might turn it around and say, when was the last time you felt joy? Tell me about that. What did that feel like? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be something to strive for? And guess what? You are in control of that. You can do that anytime. Absolutely. Uh, on my, oh, I say, on my, I have a Facebook group called the Empowerment Project. And mm -hmm. yesterday the prompt was, what is your favorite sound? And at least 60 or 70% of the people said laughter, specifically oh. child's laughter. But yeah. most people said it, laughter and ocean were kind of the two last, wow. the two sounds that everyone liked. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. Well, I was going to ask too, because, you know, you, you were talking about playing and putting an element of play into this. And, and I know, because again, I've been thinking about this recently, right? <laughs> as, as we grow up and become adults, right? We get serious and, and you know, there's, there's the pressure, there's the stress, there's the everything else, right? That goes along with it. And so much of the time we feel heavy, or at least sometimes I'll feel heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's not necessarily, sometimes life is heavy, right? Yeah. And, and, but I think, again, it's those are, again, those kind of times when it's like, hey, I just need to laugh, well, right? And, yeah. and, and, and play more like a child, you know, because unfortunately we grow up, we get all these preconceived notions of, oh, I'm a prim and proper person now, <laughs> you know, I'm an adult, I must do this. Yeah. And, and instead, really, we need to continue to let that little kid out, uh -huh. play, make it fun, laugh, regardless of what's going on in our life. Well, in fact, it was a very not happy moment when I learned about laughter. So I want to take you back to the year of 1993. And I am uh, living on the floor of my daughter's hospital room on a brightly colored polka dotted futon, which also doubled as her playroom. And she had an immune deficiency and she was quite sick and we were very isolated. So it reminds me of these times because, you know, everyone had to wear a mask and gloves and gown up to come into our room. Um, and so she, uh, her dad was living with the other two girls out of town and he, you know, we were in North Carolina at Duke Medical Center. So he would come to visit when he could and he came, uh, he came one weekend and he was sitting on a rocking chair with her in his lap and uh, her name is Jacqueline. And there was a big brightly colored poster on the wall that said, I love you very much. And he held her in his lap and he said, he was pointing to the poster. He said, I love you. And when he said you, he tickled her and she started laughing. And the two of them started laughing and I had earlier that week met with nine major doctors, like heads of the departments. And I, as I said, I was living on the floor of the bathroom, but I just started laughing and I was transported to another place. It was as if she was saying, forget all this mom, come with me, let's go to the garden, let's play. And, and we did. And so we went to that magical land where kids play because they're not here, they're playing, they're just exploring. And so, I mean, I was really transformed. I recognized the power of that laughter and I had my antenna up for it for years. And it wasn't until my older daughter later was in college and her friend uh, had become a laughter yoga leader and invited me to come to a session. I had no idea what I was in for. There were 40 strangers on the basement, in the basement of a church and um, we didn't know each other. We were told to laugh on purpose. We felt silly, we felt awkward. And then the laughter just exploded and it became unstoppable. And at that point, it was like, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. And I have to do this. And I immediately became a laughter yoga leader and later a teacher. And it is so important to me because I know the power of that laughter to change everything in your life. 
And again, you can't change the circumstances, but I've even laughed with hospice patients and I teach hospice caregivers and the medical staff. Just because someone is terminally ill does not mean that you need to sit around and be miserable every day. You still can find the joy of the moment. And so we often don't go visit someone who's sick because we don't know what to say to them. What if you walked in somebody's room and said, hey, have you done your smile ups today? Or have you laughed today? Mm -hmm. And um, there's a couple gentle finger exercises that I'm going to also show you because uh, these really help when you're trying to get into laughter. We have as adults, like you said, Jason, lots of resistance. So if you put your, spread your fingers wide, you have pressure points here and we're going to, I'm going to teach you this backwards because when we're done, we're going to say very good, very good, yay, which is a very kid-like thing to do. Very good, very good, yay, and just, you know, pretend like you're a kid. Okay, but we're accessing these pressure points in our hands, and we also can do ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. These are transitions from I remember the- doing that in laughter yoga, yeah. Yep, okay. So, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to separate each thumb, and as we bring it back together, we're going to say ha, and then we're going to increase another finger and another ha. Till we're all done. Ready? Ha. 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 I just love watching Jason. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm trying to focus on my fingers. I'm like, which one am I on now? Start with your pinky, okay? No. Try it one more time. Ready? Oh, now, now we got to go backwards. Backwards, yep. Oh, okay, here we go. I'm just gonna watch Jason. Because <laughs> when we do hypnosis, we always make Jason do it. I know. <laughs> okay. Turn your hands sideways so we can see how well you're doing. Oh boy, well, add add extra complexity to it, do we? Okay. Ha. 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 Very good, very good, yay! <laughs> very good, very good, yay! Oh my god, I just saw like four year old Jason. This is so great. <laughs> oh my god, this is hilarious. And of course, because you know this happens, we are out of time. Oh no! Uh, I know it happened so fast. Uh, the one that one thing I was going to say was, um, uh, my father had the best sense of humor ever. He was the funniest man. He was so kind. He was so filled with joy. And I remember at my mom's funeral, he was the one making everyone laugh. And it, you could see some of like the older people were like, oh, you know, how inappropriate is that that he's laughing at his wife's funeral? No, it was it was freaking awesome right. that he was well, laughing. And I, you know, I learned that from him. It's like there's never a time that you you can't bring that joy in. So I totally that's agree. Right. And the thing is, you can't be sad if you haven't once felt joy about something. Yeah. And so he was taking all the joy of her life and bringing it into that moment. And that's just awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah, for bringing a lot of joy into our lives. This has been awesome. Why don't you tell everybody, uh, I'm going to just giggle with Jason for a while. Uh, why know, don't it's you like, tell I've got my 15 minutes in today already. <laughs> know, we totally did. And we did a show before you where we were laughing. So it's good. Um, why don't you tell everybody, I know you have a new book. Why don't you tell everyone how to reach you, how to get the book, all that good stuff. Okay, great. So if you want to reach me, the easiest way is Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at Laugh Healthy. Two words, all connected, dot com. Sarah at LaughHealthy.com. And you could guess that the website is Laugh Healthy. So <laughs> LaughHealthy.com. And I have a YouTube channel that is also Laugh Healthy. And if you want to subscribe to that YouTube channel, I'd be overjoyed. So the full story of uh, my daughter's illness and uh, finding laughter can be found in this book, which we just had the book launch last week. Yay. This is an anthology of 21 authors living with chronic illness. And mine is one of two caregiver chapters. And this is so important. We had no idea when we were publishing it that it would be so timely. But these are people who you can't see that they're sick, but they're sick and in pain a lot. And so this gives a lot of information about how to live with chronic illness. And every single one of these people is filled with optimism and hope despite having multiple illnesses. And the statistics about people living with chronic illness are staggering. Over half of our population in the next five years will likely not only live with a chronic illness, but half of those will live with multiple conditions. So this book can be found. Also, you can email me at Sarah at Laugh Healthy and I can send you information. You can also find this 
on Amazon. Can't That's someone great. Fails me. So, so timely and so important. Um, Jason, a final word? No, I think this is great. I mean, again, you know, for me, I, <clears throat> I need to laugh more. I need to experience more joy, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I think a lot of times we, we all kind of chase after happiness, but like we said at the beginning, it's subjective well-being and something as simple as our little tapping, you know, giggling guy on our shoulder doing the the finger thing. I I gotta I gotta practice on, work that on that because yeah. going backwards is harder for me than forwards. <laughs> but they're they're little things that again we can do and need to do and build into our daily routines. You know, this is just as important as you know meditation as reading as you know prayer if you're spirit you know anything like that that you that you kind of do every day we just need to develop this habit of daily laughing Absolutely. you know so yeah. thank you yeah yay. thank you sarah so much for being on this was such a fun episode yay oh, all right yay i'm yay. kathy i'm kathy groover i can be reached at kathygroover.com I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So this week, go out and laugh more, practice some of these things, get Sarah's book, connect with her, watch her on YouTube, uh, but just get out there and laugh more and remember to, you know, bring that joy into your life. And with that, we will catch you all on the future episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. See ya. So much. See ya. <laughs>